morning, another day, another real test. Today, we're doing it on the Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus. Not the baby S22, not the S22 Ultra, the middle guy. And if you're not familiar, I'm gonna use this as my real phone, my SIM card's in it. I'm gonna take photos on it, some of its competitors, put it up on the screen so you guys can see how it does. We'll also talk about some of the features that I like and don't like, as well as check in on the battery throughout a day while we explore. Now, if you watched my last video on the S22 Ultra, well, I'm still in Los Angeles, albeit at a different hotel, in a different neighborhood. This is the Silver Lake Pool and Inn. It's converted from a rundown 1980s motel into this very much Palm Springs kind of a vibe, boutique hotel. Besides the rooms, the entire hotel basically is outside. And yes, as the name would suggest, there is a pool. But I probably won't be spending much time there today because I'd much rather go out and explore Silver Lake. But of course, first things first. Check. Now this is a corner in the neighborhood called Sunset Junction, and arguably the major landmark of that is the very popular Intelligentsia coffee shop with pristinely tiled interior and plenty of outdoor seating that is generally still hard to get a seat at. But we got one, and while we're here, let's talk a bit about the design of the S22 Plus. So firstly, it feels better than the S21 Plus did, and I'm not really sure why. I think it has something to do with the metal frame that's around the entire outside instead of the glass that kind of curved slightly into the frame. I don't know, it feels more solid for some reason. Now, sizes have changed from last year. They're slightly smaller across the board. The S22 is smaller than the S21, and same for the S22. Plus. Now also, the two-tone colors that I really liked about the S21 series, on most of the models, they're not there. Instead, you have the camera hump being the same color as the device itself. But if you go to Samsung's own website, they have exclusive colors, and all of those are two-tone. You don't really get a choice as to what accent color you get, but they are two-tone and I think they just look a little bit better, or at least they're more unique. Okay, but what if the 6.7 inch screen just isn't enough? Maybe you wanna watch content in over, I don't know, 100 inches. Well, that's where today's sponsor comes in. This is the XJimmy Horizon Pro, and besides being a true 4K projector, it's also fast to boot up, taking less than six seconds. It has a game mode with latency as low as 35 milliseconds, so you can plug in your games via HDMI and play without any lag. And it's running Android TV 10, so you have plenty of entertainment options from popular streaming services like Hulu, Prime Video, and Disney Plus. And while watching those services, you can even see them in a better contrast ratio, thanks to it supporting HDR 10 and even HLG, which is the HDR broadcast standard. So you'll even get a better image while watching the game, for example. And if things get moving quickly in said game, the Horizon Pro even supports 60 hertz MEMC, which uses frame interpolation with their own specialized algorithm to increase the frame rate with the least amount of motion blur. So your sports, movies, and games stay sharp and clear even in the heat of the action. For more information on the XJimmy Horizon Pro, check out the link below. And thanks again to XJimmy for sponsoring this video. So this is why I always ride birds, because the limes have no power. Like, can't even get up the hill. They're also like, jankier. We might ride the lime to a bird and then continue. Let's try this again. This is where the neighborhood of Silver Lake gets its name. This body of water was named in 1906 for the water board commissioner and politician Herman Silver. It's actually not a lake, it's a reservoir. And it was used to provide water to the region up until around 2017 or so, when it was replaced by an underground one north of Griffith Park. Now there is a small reservoir next to it called Ivanhoe that is still active, but the much larger Silver Lake is now more of a gathering place than anything else, with a walking path all the way around it that people jog on, a large dog park at the bottom, and a small park called Silver Lake Meadow that was actually modeled after Sheep Meadow in Central Park in New York City. And it seems like a good place to talk about the cameras on this phone. We've all updated hardware for the cameras with a new ultra wide, new 50 megapixel main camera that bends its pixels together in sets of four to get larger pixels for better low light performance. And we have a three times optical telephoto. And compared to the S21 Plus, 
there's a slight difference, slash improvement at least, but you can be the judge by the end of this video, as always. Now the software updates actually have improved the digital zoom a bit, with going a bit past three times optical not looking that bad and better than it did on the last model. But of course, going all the way to the full 30 times top zoom isn't terribly usable. But as I've said before, the more cameras you wanna put on the back of a phone, the happier I am because it just means a lot more different focal lengths that I can use, which just gives me more options for photos and videos. Oh, and here's what the selfie camera looks like. And this is the Black Cat. And it is the site of an anti-gay police raid and subsequent protest for gay rights that happened here in 1967 and was named a Los Angeles Historical Cultural Monument in 2008. Now it has since been many different bars and many different owners and names, but as of 2012, it's regained the name The Black Cat in memory of the earlier establishment. And right now, it has a great little outdoor area in the parking lot next to it with heat lamps, serving good beers, and a great burger. Now on this phone, for battery, the phone oddly has a 4500 milliamp battery compared to the S21 Plus's 4800 milliamp one, but it's a 120 hertz display that can lower its refresh rate when looking at static images. So that should save a little power. Also, the processor is newer and supposedly more power efficient as well. But frankly, it feels like it's kind of about the same as last year. Speaking of, it died. So here's my screen out of my usage for anyone who's curious about that. Now, keep in mind, I've been using my camera, taking videos and photos, all day today, so it's not a very normal day, so just keep that in mind. But here's another day that I did that was not a real world test day, so you have something to compare that to. Okay, calling it a night. Overall, the phone probably isn't worth upgrading from the S21 Series 4, but that's probably expected nowadays because no one really upgrades their phone every year anyway. It is, however, a solid phone. It has a really great screen. The battery life is decent. The cameras are good. And it's probably just worth a look on your list of phones that you're checking out, especially if you're coming from like an older Samsung phone, and even more especially if you can get a good trade-in deal on that current phone you have to help you buy this one. Speaking of, I'll leave a link below to the best prices that I could find on the phone for anyone who's looking for that, as well as more info on the device. So there you go. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below about the phone, about this format, about the video. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. And if you're not already, please subscribe to the channel and ding the bell next to the word subscribe so you can notify when I do new videos. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching. Potential copyright strikes everywhere. <laughs>